Hey church, hope you are well and um, whatever time of day you're starting this devotion, um, listening to this devotion, watching this devotion, um, I hope that it's going to be or has been a great day for you. My name's Darren, I'm one of the pastors at Audacious Church and it's absolutely brilliant for me to be um, sharing this um, this devotion and this thought with you today and uh, it's just something that's been I reckon on my heart um, for a while and just something that I've been thinking on and uh, going over um, and just trying to put into my um, thinking and into my heart. In uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 22 to 23, it says this, God set his seal of ownership on us and put his spirit in our hearts as a deposit guaranteeing what is to come. And... um, you know, this these last um, few months, last year, uh, I'm sure for many of us, if not all of us, have been um, difficult, hard times, uh, in amongst great times. Um, the pandemic um, has, has challenged us, but also changed us. Um, um, and those that can be an absolutely brilliant thing. But my, my thought is, is this, is that in difficult circumstances, uncomfortable circumstances, one thing that I'm learning and putting into my being is remembering whose I am. And that's my thought for today is just that we remember whose we are. Just got a question for you. Well, two questions actually, but my first question is, have you ever bought anything of value? Have you um, a house, a car, um, uh, an item of jewellery? You bought it, you own it, it's yours and it belongs to you. And whatever it is, if it's that item of jewellery, you wear it with pride or you've given it to someone Um, And it is of value and significance to you. A house, a car, you look after it, you cherish it, you you know, it's yours. Um, You've you've worked hard for it. Um, Here's another another question on, on the same lines. Have you ever had to buy something back that was yours? So it's been of significance and of value, and for whatever reason, um, maybe it, it was lost, or maybe um, circumstances dictated, or whatever. But you had to buy it back. Um, I personally, it's never happened to me, but it is a thought of um, having to buy something back. Um, some people who are listening to this, watching this, you maybe have had to buy something back. Um, but I can imagine the feeling. Um, of getting that thing back um, is is um, overwhelming. That that thing of of value, of significance, of importance to you, that that is overwhelming. Relieving, bringing a smile to your face. That what um, you've got back in your hands, you've you've got got it got it back. And I can imagine that what what it must be like for God. And th- this is my point here: is that Father God who created and breathed life into into you. Um, and and birthed you and thought of you. The Bible says that he knitted you together in your mother's womb. That he he had a a ownership. You were his. Um, and when we go right back to Genesis in in the creation of the world and and time and 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 man, that that we were his. But due to a decision made, that all changed. When Adam and Eve bit into the fruit and decided actually through um, trickery and deception that they wanted to experience what it was like to be God, that they separated not just themselves, but the whole of mankind from God. But Father God didn't leave it there. He went on a buyback mission, a plan, sending Jesus' only son to buy us back by the, the death on the cross, the resurrection, the shedding of his blood in that in that moment of what was once God's being bought back through an ultimate sacrifice so that we could be back in relationship with God. I I imagine that when that happened, the smile that came back on God's face, on the Father's face, when Jesus said, it is finished. And God knew what, the Father knew what that meant. And he knew that we were able in that moment to return back to him because of being 
bought back by the blood of Jesus Christ. This transaction, this one transaction took place on the cross over 2,000 years ago when Jesus bought us back. And what does this mean? We are his. I am his. You are his child, his son, his daughter, who he deeply loves, totally accepts and says, and says is enough. It is nothing that you have done. It's no performance related. It's simply because he loves you and wants you back as part of his family. You can't earn it. You can't perform for it. You just have to accept him. Say yes to him. That's, that's it. That puts us back in God's family. And this is what I'm, I'm remembering because I've made that decision. I've made lots of choices in my life. Some really good ones like marrying Catherine, doing a year out um, in a college um, church internship scenario. Uh, and some not so good ones like flipping my sister off a scooter and busting her nose. Not a good one. But the best decision I've made He's saying yes to Jesus and choosing to follow him. And because of this, I can say with absolute confidence and assurance, I am his. And begin to live in these truths. The, just, I've just got five, but there's many, many more. Just listen to this. Because I am his, I'm a new creation. The old is gone. The new is here. Because I am his, I have nothing to fear. Because I am his, I'm a threat to the devil. Because I am his... I am free from condemnation because I am his. I can approach God with boldness and confidence. Just five statements because I am his, because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, because of that, um, that, that mission to rescue mankind, because God said, no, I'm not leaving it here. I will get back what was mine. And he went on this mission and he sent his only son who died on the cross because I am his, because you are his, because we say yes to Jesus and choose to follow him. Because of this, no matter the circumstance or the situation or what's going on, what we face on a daily basis, what the world throws at us, whether it's good or bad, whether we can laugh or we can cry, we can say in every situation and every circumstance, I can speak to my soul, I can... I can speak to my mind. I can bring renewal by saying, because I am his, I am a new creation. Because I am his, I have nothing to fear. Because I am his, I am a threat to the devil. Because I am his, I am free from condemnation. Because I am his, I can approach God with confidence. We can make these statements on a daily basis, reminding ourselves of who we are and what this means they are like food to our mind and body and soul, strengthening our lives and helping you stand on a firm foundation, knowing who and whose you are. This this is personal to me because I'm working at reminding myself of, of this on a daily basis, whose I am, because life can throw so many things. It can have, It's amazing ups and it's amazing lows. We can be in the thick of it, but what I can do is on a daily basis, remind myself whose I am and what this means. And I just encourage you as I finish, I have two thoughts to finish with. The first is that let's, let's take or make each day, let's make it a daily habit to remind ourselves whose we are. Just, just simply those those five statements or, or other statements through your own personal devotion and reading the Bible, just getting some I am statements. I am a child of God. And then let that, let that soak in. Or, or just simply say those words as you wake up in the morning when you look in the mirror. I am a child of God. And then let that soak through and let the Holy Spirit encourage you on what this means. Let almost a, a mind explosion of what that means to say, I am a child of God. I guarantee you it will build strength, confidence and peace within you because this life will throw many twists and turns at you. But when you know whose you are, you'll stand tall and you'll stand firm. I am just quick, simple statements that say, I am a child of God and because I am his, dot, dot, dot. The second thing, and uh, I was just, as I was writing, I thought this, and it jumps back into this uh, statement of the greatest choice that I've ever made was to say yes to Jesus and to follow him and to live live my life as a, as a person who follows Jesus. And I, and I thought about this, that saying yes is not a one-off thing. 
we say yes, we choose to follow Jesus in, in, in that moment uh, of our lives. And you, you know when it was for you. But I just thought to myself, it's not saying yes to Jesus isn't a one off thing. Saying yes to Jesus is a daily exercise in choosing daily to live the way the Bible te teaches us to follow scripture and the promptings of the Holy Spirit. My thought as I write this is what are you being asked to say yes to? today what in your devotion or your bible reading or or maybe is that occurring ongoing continuous where you just can't shift it's a niggle of just the holy spirit prompting and and jesus saying this is what i want you to do what are you putting off what are you making excuses for put simply what is jesus asking you to do and what do you need to say yes to we say yes to following him every day to being obedient to his teaching and his word it but what what is he asking you to say yes to and i just wanted to leave leave this thought as i was writing i, I feel that the holy spirit really impressed it upon me just to ask this ask this question what is god asking of you maybe it's to be more generous maybe it's to forgive someone Maybe it's to commit to a team at church or to, to a small group. Maybe it's to talk to your neighbour or your friend or your work colleague. Maybe um, it's, it's just simply saying, yes, I'll do that. Maybe for some people, it's going on at Audacious College and taking a year out. Make a decision today as a child of God to simply say yes. Love you, church. Have an absolutely incredible rest of your day, whatever time it is. Remember these two thoughts, just um, two thoughts for us, that you meditate daily on whose you are. I am a child of God, and because I am his, dot, dot, dot. And then secondly, what is Jesus just maybe asking you to say yes to today? That we say yes to Jesus when we choose to follow him, but a daily, what are the things that he's maybe asking us, you, me, to say yes to? Again, love you, church. See you soon. Have a great rest of the day and um, praying for you. Bye for now.